<laughs> so what I'm going to show you is uh, three projects, very quickly. Um, the relationship between each of those projects, the outcomes, and most importantly, how it all started with a uh, personal project. And the personal project, the personal project was demo, or is demo, I should say. And demo is a large format um, music magazine that profiles up and coming artists. And the performance goal for this project was to create an outlet for our own creative expression. And that's a good thing, but it's not enough to drive a project. So one of the other reasons we did it was because we wanted to find areas that we're interested in and see how we could actually transform that into commissioned work. So find a passion and turn that into a pay packet. And then the profit goal was actually to break even. You know, we weren't looking to make massive amounts of cash out of it, but we were also mindful that we didn't want to create a bottomless pit that all of our cash went into. And finally, the personal goal was to help someone outside of ourselves, which is a really important goal for one of these personal projects. So Demo ticked all the boxes. Um, it was a perfect vessel for creative expression. Obviously, we got to use our own design skills, collaborating with artists and photographers. Um, it helped a group of people outside ourselves, the artists. We were looking to promote them, give them a voice, tell their story. And then finally, it gave us a great introduction to record labels, which is the one business that we were trying to get into. We wanted to work on albums. We wanted to work on film clips, all those kinds of things. So before even trying to get this thing off the ground, you need to look at what's this thing going to cost. And um, the biggest cost was in the print production. So we said to ourselves, we need to get a printer on board. So we had an established relationship with a printer and we went to them and we said, we need you to get involved in this project. And they said, well, we're not just going to jump on board, you have to do something for us. And luckily at that point, this company, Lindsay Yates Group, had a really daggy, outdated look and we said, well, why don't we rebrand you, give you a new lease on life and then you can give us the print in return. So we worked out a contra deal. And we sat down and we created a new brand, we created a whole range of communications from posters to books and motion graphics and all those kind of things. And in the end we created this really outstanding portfolio piece for ourselves and also created a project that took their <coughs> business to the next level. And all of that was in exchange for three issues printed of the magazine. So it was the best outcome we could have possibly come up with. But finally, after demo came off the press, a month after it came off the press, we got a call from the d domestic music manager at Warner Music. And he said, I've just bought the magazine, come in and have a meeting. And we did that. And we went in and after a series of conversations, he said, do you want to do the album artwork for Katie Noonan's debut album? And we said, hell yeah, of course we'd like to do it. And that was a dream come true for us. Um, and over the next two years, we worked on four more album projects. And then finally, um, after two years, the CEO asked us in and he said, I want to revitalise the whole brand. And that turned into a massive project in itself, combining all of our expertise but all of our passion. So it was, again, another dream outcome. So really, Demo started it all. It made a roll-on effect that became the base of our business. And from there, one of the most important things is it set the tone the kind of work that we wanted to produce, all from this personal project, the whole lot. And when I say tone, it's really important to tell people the projects you want to work on, and that means that clients who are attracted to that kind of work will come in the door. Uh, we realised that the personal project paid for itself tenfold, but more importantly, <coughs> our satisfaction and, if I can be just really uh, honest, our happiness was just way through the roof, which was probably the best thing out of the whole thing. We were getting paid to do this personal project and the income generated for it far outweighed our investment. So at the end of all this, you start to realise that sometimes the most valuable project in your studio is the one that doesn't have any monetary value to it. Um, you actually need vision to realise that you know, some projects in your studio, especially the personal, um, personal initiated ones, they're the most valuable ones and the profit from them indirectly can far outweigh the most single prof profitable project you have in your studio. And Mark and I always say that it's really actually bad business sense not to have personal projects in your top priorities uh, and especially with workload. Um, these projects can be the 
projects that build the future of your business and if they're neglected, then you could find yourselves hating your job and who knows what comes from that. So quickly, I've got two and a half more minutes. Um, four things that Mark and I came up with that we thought are kind of good points to make about understanding the relationship between personal work and commission work. And the first is, is that large businesses don't always want the most progressively creative outcome from themselves, but they are attracted to and inspired by very creative projects that could possibly be in your portfolio. And so what I mean by that, they're attracted to work that they might not necessarily want to do themselves. Um, everyone listens to music, everyone watches movies, and they can be inspired by anything. So even if it's what you perceive the most boring as client, they could come to you because of the most creative project. Um, personal work can really ignite people's imaginations and get your foot in the door in places that you never thought you would be. Um, also, clients are attracted to people who invest in their own work, you know, back it up. You know, why should they um, invest in you if you're not prepared to put your own money where your mouth is? And there's an old saying that you have to spend money to make money. And while I'm not asking people to put their life savings into something, I am saying that if you have a good idea and you believe in it, you should be willing to put your own money behind it. Be smart. Create projects in areas that you're keen to get into. Take yourself there. Um, target your work with specific goals. Like if you want it to fall in someone's lap, why do you want it to fall in their lap? Is it going to lead to another client or another success or another project? Um, there's nothing wrong with thinking very strategically about where your creativity can take you. I'm a firm believer in that. And finally, what will you leave behind? Famous last words, what's your legacy? And I'll really stress this point. Um, indulging in projects that are just all about looking good they usually lead to just a big pile of crap. And I'm saying that because I learnt that the hard way and did a big pile of crap before I did demo. And the reality is, is that you'll get much more personal and professional reward out of projects that have real meaning and purpose driving them. Of course, those projects can look good, but the thing that's going to attract people to those projects and really drive you to do them are the meaning and purpose behind them. So hopefully they were some famous last words. Thanks a lot. I look forward to continuing the discussion. Thanks, guys.